You are listening to the OK Dad podcast. Please leave your message for Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. OK Daddy. OK Dad podcast. Let's start this thing. You're listening to my husband talk a lot. What is good, Ramiro? Hey, what's up, man? It's a long time no see. I know, man. It's been a while. <laughs> That's crazy. It's just so <laughs> weird. <laughs> I know. It's been like what? I I think I was talking to my wife like it's literally been years since I've talked hey, to like, I'm, Ramiro. <laughs> you see, you can't even say my name. I know, I, I forgot a, the name. <laughs> that's okay, like 90% of people can't say my name. <laughs> but so yeah, how, no. How do you pronounce it? Like, Ramiro? Or yeah, I, I, I always pronounce it with a D. I know a lot of people pronounce it with an R. But yeah. I now I just go by Ram. Ram? <laughs> so okay. that way, like, it ends the debate. I'm just like, I'm yeah. just Ram. There we go. Yeah, well, my grandfather's name was actually Ramiro. Oh, that's yeah, cool. I think so. he told me that, like, years ago. Like it legit, like two decades ago, probably, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's what, gosh, 2021, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it's 2021. Crazy. Yeah, and you're insane. you're a dad now, too, right? I am a dad now, which is dude. also insane. Like, congrats, that's, thank you, thank you. Yeah, she's uh 14 months. Oh man, so young. Yeah, yeah. is she is yeah. she walking? Oh yeah, she's walking. She's bossing me around. She yeah. she knows uh, sign language too. Oh really? Because she can't really talk right now. She's still you know mama dad. Uh, yeah. But she you know when she wants to eat, she'll like eat please more. Oh. Yeah. Do you teach her that or? Uh, I it's funny because my wife works at a daycare. I do too now, but she's yeah. way longer than I have. And she was like, yeah, that's what we do to help the kids. Cause she's in the toddler room. Yeah. So she's like, we teach them sign language cause they can't talk yet. And that yeah. helps a lot. So that's what we did with her. Dude. That's cool. Asher, <laughs> Asher, uh, he's three and oh, man, he probably didn't even start walking till maybe 20 months 23 months i don't know i wow. i like swore that i would never say like months like hey how old your son i would always say like hey he's one <laughs> like, like i was like what why is everybody doing these numbers and then i know then i'd be out and like people were like how old is he and i was like oh he's, he's two years old and they're like two years and like uh, yes and exactly <laughs> so i, I lost the same mindset yeah, dude, I lost I lost that battle early on. Oh, man. Yeah, and my wife is like, no, it's just that's how it is. It's easier. I'm like, oh, all right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, everybody everybody don't know. And then the clothes is even in that size, too. Yep. Like that that mm-hmm. was news to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a, like a culture shock of like, wow. <laughs> this is right? so different now. When uh, did you know you were going to be a dad? Were y'all planning for it? Oh, no. Um my wife uh for like a maybe less than a year we were both my wife and i were both working for apple support and she actually got to be like a trainer so she had to go to like this training in california like to the main apple headquarters and then she was like guess what (laughs) and i was like oh while she was away yep dude and I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't be there for you right now. Like, oh, my God. And she was like, yeah, I'm coming back pregnant. Like, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So well, was, like, did she oh. just, like, miss? That was when she missed her first? Her yeah, first yeah. Oh, she knew something man. was up. And, like, oh, man. And I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> Dang. Were you, were you wanting a daughter? Or Ever since son? Or it didn't matter? it kind of didn't matter but even as a kid i've always wanted a, a girl like a daughter yeah. i don't know why i don't know what it is about that but like when before we knew the gender we were like i hope it's a girl i hope it's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how that's how we were we were thinking uh our next son who she my wife's due in march we were thinking uh-huh. um she was we were thinking she, she was gonna have a girl and so I, i'd make a joke that it was gonna be a boy and she'd get all <laughs> And so I'm like, okay, okay, like, let's put it out there into the world. Like, hey, um, we're going to have a girl, okay? And then uh, when we opened up the card and everything, because I couldn't, I couldn't go into the center with her right now. Oh, yeah, COVID. yeah, yeah. So when we open up the card, it says, like, boy, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm so happy, <laughs> but I'm so mm-hmm. sad because she wanted a girl. <laughs> Just the luck of the dice, man. Uh, and Yeah, and that's weird because it's like, – and it was a mutual um, – 
a mutual want for a girl so it wasn't like oh i wanted a boy or she wanted a boy or vice versa yeah it was just like we were both had our fingers crossed for a girl yeah. and we were hoping for halloween to be like the the date of birth because we she was going to be induced but then her blood pressure was so high mm -hmm. on her checkup on the third that the doctor's like it's gonna have to be today oh, like man. if your blood pressure doesn't go down yeah. it's gonna have to be today and then like they checked it again and like it's higher so yeah definitely today Oh, so man. we were like, man, and like we could have had a Halloween baby. Yeah, but well, my son, same thing. Um, my wife, they're like, when is she doing? She's uh, Asher's. Asher's gonna come out October thirteenth, and we're like, cool. Hey, this yeah. year that that's Friday. Yeah, he was gonna be born October thirteenth on the Friday, oh, and uh, it was a C-section. He's like, oh, I don't do C-sections on Friday. Oh so, man. <laughs> so we're like, all right. That's why he was born on the 16th. Yeah, and it's like, uh, but I mean, with our daughter, we still call her a little spooky because she was born in, yeah. you know, the Halloween season. Still so we're counts. like, I mean, that still counts. Like, that's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> but that's crazy, man. That would have been a cool date, too. I know. Like, the oh, 31st, that'd be, that'd be even better. Like, you're born All right, right. Knock out mm -hmm. two parties at once. Exactly. Have a costume party for her birthday. Yeah. But we had a, all this planned. And then, <laughs> you know. Life Plans happens, change. dude. Yeah, exactly. Life happens. Exactly. Life happens. Man. <laughs> what did, uh, when, uh, I guess, I don't know, I have a couple of questions because, like, yep, I haven't any, talked any to you for, you like, have. forever, man. So, <laughs> I like, know. Going, going into your journey, like, as mm -hmm. being a dad, like, where do you think you had, uh, like, any support from, like, background? You think you got, like, stuff from anybody? It's, fun. it's crazy because it's, like, I've, I've told my wife, like, my dad was there, but not the best role model, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I had my uncle, I had my grandpa to kind of see an image of what it was like. And then it's like, my on my wife's side too, it's like, she has her stepdad, hadn't really talked to her dad at the time. Then, you know, we started talking more and... But the support was like everywhere. Her mom, yeah. her family, my family, just like a huge support system, especially her, my, my grandmother-in-law, just huge support. Yeah. And I couldn't have asked for like a better family, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that's good, man. Like you hear, like, I know, I know everybody's usually like, Hey, we're here for you and everything. Like mm -hmm. as far as like who you have for like a role model, like who you want to emulate did you have anybody that you're trying to like hey i could be a father and i'm trying to i'm trying to be as good as he is uh that's hard i don't i don't know if i do i know like i had some some friends who are dads and it's like they're they're doing great and it's like i try to be like okay let me do it let me not so much like role model after them but like okay so they're they're doing that okay that's good to know. And honestly, like my <laughs> biggest role model is my wife because she's worked so much in daycare. Like she, yeah. she knew what to do since day one. Like she had a yeah. plan and she was like, these are the, the bottles we need to buy. This is the brand of diapers that are good. This, this, and that all because she knows she's already in yeah, she's that like, area, in that world. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. For, uh, we did. Um, so I've never like heated up a bottle in like water or microwave yeah. bit. we ended up we're like we should just spend the money on that baby Keurig thing where you just mm -hmm. put the formula in dude that was a that was a lifesaver for us like and midnight like, waking up press the button like it fills mm -hmm. up the bottle i'm like dude this oh, is man. easy this is so easy and and i would talk to people about that and they're like no i it takes me about like 20 minutes just to get the bottle ready the baby yeah ready. i was like no yeah. like 10 minutes tops oh, like maybe back to sleep but it, it was it was like three four hundred dollars and that was oh man at the yeah. time we didn't we didn't have like money everything at that time when when asher came we we're just like all right we're putting this on a credit card we didn't have we didn't have the like financial sense at the time mm -hmm. we're like putting everything on a card like diapers yeah yeah rig and we're like okay but it, it it saved us a couple hours of sleep it didn't get us like the full night's sleep but yeah it did save us some sleep no i completely understand yeah because we had a, a bottle warmer we just plugged it in mm. i couldn't fill it up with too much water because then it would overspill 
and yeah. I couldn't put not enough water because then you would hear it bubbling and it might burn like the bottom mm. of the bottle. So it was like a, a thing that I had to learn and balance and like I had to clean every now and then and sometimes I'll forget to clean it. It would look gross, but like yeah. it was a good like, okay, like this is something new. This is something I never had to do before and I have to learn how to do it right. And yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, I know like... I I don't even know who I would have to pick. Like if I had to pick like a role model, mm-hmm. my my dad was a good dad growing up. He was like he pr- provided financially. We had a lot of talks. Whenever my dad would have so many talks with me, like like Atticus Finch, like would talk to his kids. That's how my dad was. He would always talk to me. And there's moments where I'm like, is you know this isn't the like end all be all of answers like Mm -hmm. i see the way other fathers are talking to their kids or interacting with them and my father smokes a ton (laughs) he smokes like a couple packs a day Mm -hmm. so i never got a good amount of like hey let's just go outside and play let's toss the ball around we would go we would go on a we would take our bikes mountain biking but like after so many like maybe even 15 20 minutes we'd be mountain biking and then he'd need a break (laughs) <laughs> stuff like stuff like that it's like yeah you're not you're not that entertained as a kid because you're wanting mm-hmm. to just keep going yeah i have my grandfather my grandfather was there quite a bit and he um he was the funny one i think that's probably where i got <laughs> my sense of humor from and mm-hmm. like uh, we haven't talked in a while and but me and Christian talk about you pretty often too, because I know you're good, you're good friends with Christian, and we yeah. talk like we'll be randomly at work talking about something. I'm like, oh yeah, Ramiro did that though. Ramiro. Did that? <laughs> no, yeah, especially when Chris and I did our show. We're trying to see how we can do it again, but it's like doing that show was amazing because I got to yeah. do my like the silly voices and the comedy and the improv, and it was just really fun. Yeah, he and came it, here and we we recorded some stuff like yeah he's a good guy to like just collab with and do yeah oh yeah i love chris but um but yeah going back to what you're saying about dads like i remember my dad like i know he loved me he was just like like i i remember specifically i don't remember what play i think it was like in middle school i was in a play and i was like dad will you help me run lines and he was like i guess (laughs) but his way of doing it was i would i had the script and I would try to offer it to him. He's like, no, I'm, I'm okay. So I would say my lines and he would just say something random, even gibberish. And then that would, I guess, cue me to say my next line. <laughs> so like he wouldn't bother reading it, but he was like, yeah, I'll help you. Uh, so I'm like, oh, it's a good, uh, good weather today, Dr. Samuel. And he was like, uh, beans are in the fridge. And I was like, I... And then I just looked at my script. I'm like, okay, like, and that's how I learned my lines by yeah, talking. Just ad-libbing. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, this is really weird. And then, like, well, little did you know, your dad was on whose line is it anyway? I, exactly <laughs> right. But it's like it's one of those things where it's like he didn't fully understand, but he still wanted to support me. Yeah. And it's like that's how you know he didn't have to, and I I always appreciated that. Yeah. I, I know with me, I, I could, I could definitely tell like my dad has love for me. He's been there for me. There's, there's key points in my life that I remember vividly, like theater arts was definitely, I was big in theater arts mm-hmm. with Miss Gable. Yep. And my mom would go to every single play. We had three <laughs> plays in a row. She would go, my father would go to one or none (laughs) and it was because he worked a ton which you know at the time like i'm working so you can eat i'm working blah blah blah. okay i get it okay don't come to my play you're just fine you just remember those moments as a kid and like some people like hold on to it they just hold Mm -hmm. on to that anger and then they grow up and they're like oh well you you were never there for me and you didn't watch this it's not like that but i do understand like hey you know, there's times that were important to me as a kid. And as a kid, I don't know that they're that important to me. Exactly. Yeah. And I I can't fault him for not knowing if I'm over here a teenager and I don't know it myself. Mm-hmm. So like moving forward, looking at those different instances, I kind of try to reflect and see throughout the time. <laughs> like, hey, is there something that I am missing? 
I, I should do it a lot more. I probably do it like on a monthly basis. <laughs> I'll go back and I'm like, hey, did I miss something with my daughter this week? Did something happen this month that we need to talk mm-hmm. about more? And even, you know, as your, as your kids are like, as young as yours is like, and there's key moments there that you're going to want back too. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. What are some, what are some big moments with your daughter that you have? Well, you seeing her first steps uh, was pretty big and then helping her walk, holding her, seeing her like kind of hold on to the sofa and like gently trying to get to the table, which is only like four feet, o- like four little steps away. But for her, it's like a mile. Yeah. Um, seeing her roll over hearing her giggle uh but one of like the biggest monuments and like i'll i'll never forget is because you know how i said she was uh it was an induced labor on october Mm -hmm. 3rd and she was scheduled for the 31st so she was a preemie so just going to the hospital twice a day for like almost a month if not like three weeks just to like see her and then like the doctor being like, it could be today, but like having that like repeated every day. And it's like, I just, like, I just want to go home and then have like, finally bringing her her home. home. And we did on Halloween. And I'm like, so the, you like the universe balanced out in a way, like we got to bring her home on Halloween. And it was like one of the best memories that I've ever like experienced. It was so amazing. Just bring them like you're loading up your daughter in that car and you're like, yep. Yeah. We're out of here. We're not coming yep. back guys. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're done with this place. Yep. I know that feeling. Oh, we're there. What, how long was your, uh, was your wife there on the third? Uh, oh, gosh. Felt like I forever. I don't remember. It did feel like, I remember she was born at like 6 40 PM that day but i remember it taking like all day because i had to get it prepped and then like monitoring my wife and like i had to call my work i had to call my family i had to call her family because it was all happening so fast yeah and it was just insane yeah no it's it's, it's a lot uh betty was betty was a c-section scheduled Mm -hmm. c-section it's tough dude you got to be the rock there and yeah where you like hey your blood pressure's rising like you gotta be there like hey we're gonna get through this it's okay it's probably yeah. this we're gonna make it mm-hmm. we got doctors here where yeah. you feel you feel safe because you're in a hospital there with staff mm-hmm. you can only imagine what they're feeling yeah and i i remember feeling like you know we're about to have a c-section here and my wife was getting worried but I'm the guy. I'm the guy she's relying on. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, I don't know. This is a big job. If you're relying on me for it, what do you, uh, <laughs> what are some things you think you and your wife like had some arguments or like disconnects on with your daughter? Uh, with our daughter, I wouldn't say it's so much like disconnection. It's more of like, someone who already had experience helping somebody who has no experience Mm. so it's like when she was saying like okay so we're gonna do this we're gonna do this we're not gonna do this i'm like okay why okay well here's why oh okay and then in my head i'm like can we give her this and like no because of this and this and this okay so it's like yeah her getting the patience to like teach me basically and it's like and both of us too because it's like she's never had a kid before but she's like helped raise kids especially like Mm -hmm. her siblings her younger siblings her you know the kids at work and like all this other stuff and also having it to be our daughter too throws like that completely out so she's got to like tweak it as well so it's not so much did you have any siblings no i was an only child an only child i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah only child and then when my wife and I got married, I was like, I have siblings now. Cause she's got three younger siblings. And like, yeah. I, I love them to death, but like, I just like felt that. And I don't know, like we were talking about having another kid or not. And we're like, I mean, if it happens, it happens. If not, you know, it's okay. Like I was an only kid. I came out with fine art. Like our kid so far is an only kid Yeah, and it's okay so far. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels right now. It feels like Asher's, 
an only kid because he's here. Uh, Cindy, my mm-hmm. daughter, is going to be 12. Oh, wow. On the weekend, she goes to her bio dad's house. So Asher on the weekends is usually by himself. So he doesn't mm-hmm. have anybody to play with. So I wanted another kid when Asher was born. I'm like, hey, let's do a turn and burn. She's like, no, nah, I kind of want to wait till Asher's Cindy's. <laughs> then we can have a third mm-hmm. kid. And I'm oh, like, well, man. I don't want to wait that long. That's like a big gap between them. And yeah. Like, no, like, it'll be better for like daycare because Cindy can take a, take care of Asher right now. She can change a diaper. I'm like, all right, like, you got me. I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, three years later, we're like, hey, should we, should we try again? And we're like, yeah, let's try. And last time it took, I think it was two months. We're like, we should oh, try. Wow. And then after two months, we're like, nah, we don't need it. <laughs> and then like two weeks later, Boom. Like yeah, that's that's yeah. how it happens, yeah. And it's funny because that's how we were. Uh, we got married like three years ago, and then within that first year, we were like, "Should we have a kid? Like, let's have a kid." And then we stopped trying, and then uh, towards the end of you know, or like that trip in 2019, she was like, I'm "Pregnant." <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you never know. Dude, I'm like, so oh cool. wow, like that's that's really weird and awesome and scary but yeah you know here i am i went from like that dorky comedy kid in high school to like i I don't know if you can see it but i literally have my daughter on my blanket (laughs) nice dude (laughs) it was a father's day gift and i've never like used another blanket since then yeah my uh my wife got me let's see if i can put this up she got me in like a (laughs) <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah she's that's got so me like cool. so much dad stuff and i think that's really important too like mm-hmm. your wife knows that you're a good dad mm-hmm. like lets you know it that just really boosts i think your confidence as well yeah going into it yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it. i am a pretty okay dad let me, <laughs> let me, let me let's go out for a walk like right. that stuff <laughs> like, i think mm-hmm. it kind of helps yeah and like you know, hearing it from my mom and other people, like oh, you're such a good dad. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll have to keep it up. Yeah, you're you're like out in a stroller or something. Everybody's like, <laughs> is that is that a dad over there just talking to kid? Because <laughs> you do. Feel, I feel like dads get more more praise, especially doing do. stuff. And there's yeah, tons of joke about it. Like, Oh my god, that that dad at the mall. You see him pushing that that baby? Like, oh my gosh. It's like, dude, all I'm doing is pushing my baby. Like, get off. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, that's how I feel because sometimes because my wife and I work in the same place. So it's like sometimes I get off early or I have a day off. So I'll have her and it's like I'm trying to think, okay, what can we do? I'm like, ah, paper. So I'll get paper, put it all over the coffee table, I'll give her crayons. And she's just like scribbling all over. And my wife's like, you did that? That's awesome. And I was like, I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to think of like fun things for her to do. Yeah. And, you know, keep her busy and like help her motor skills develop and everything like that. They do, and, especially now with iPads and stuff. Like, if, Oh, if my God. Just, yeah. If you just keep giving them everything else, they'll play with it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they throw a fit when you take it away. 20 minutes later, 15 minutes uh, later, yep. they're, they forget totally about it. Exactly. Take it away, let him go outside. Take it away, give him, like you said, paper. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll come home to like an absolute mess because oh, Betty let Asher and Cindy have glitter, paper, glue <laughs> all over the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. But that smile and the laughter, it's like, okay, man. Like, yeah. I'll spend an extra 20 minutes cleaning <laughs> this up. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's hard to say no. And like, you want them to have those experiences. And yeah. you want them like the same way, like we talked about it, like having them like how we are now. And like, you know, when I was a kid, they would just let me play with glitter. Or, like they would just do this. Mm-hmm. And that was like, that meant so much. And like, that's what I'm trying to go for. It's like trying to help her, you know, make those memories and have those memories. Yeah. So that we, I, you know, I remember when we were like, I guess, I don't know, preteens, teens, how old are we in middle school? Got to be oh, preteens to teens, teenager, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We were walking around all over the neighborhood. I remember we used to walk to the mall. Me and Corn Chip would just <laughs> walk to the mall. And where we're at now, we there's a middle school right next to us, and we can see mm-hmm. 
the football field, the basketball courts. And uh, I'll tell Cindy, I was like, why don't you, why don't you go over there? We call it the park. Why don't you go over there to the park? She's like, no, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you're going to the park. Be back in an hour. <laughs> and then so she'll take her bike or she'll walk down there, walk around the track, talk to some friends and then come back. And I'm like, hey, you're uh, before she was that old. I, in our last neighborhood, I would have her get on her bike and I, I came out and I was like really strict. I was like, Hey, you see that stop sign over there? That's the end of your limits. That stop sign over there. That's the end of your limits. That stop sign right up the road. That's the end of your limits. I was like, I need to be able to come outside and whistle. And then you come back. She was like, okay. And she's stuck to that. And now that we moved, I'm like, you know, you can, you can take your bike around the neighborhood. Like I'm pretty confident, you know, where we live. So if you need help coming back, like you have a phone now. Mm -hmm. So how, how young do you think kids need to have a phone at? Do you give your daughter a phone next year? Or? <laughs> I mean, she basic, my phone is basically hers because I have, like, this, like, weird color light app. So, like, when when I, like, don't know what to give her, I'm like, here, just play with this for, like, a few minutes while, like, I'm, I'm heating up your food. Yeah. And she'll just, like, be mesmerized. So, like, with just one finger, like, it's, like, s smoke or something like that. And you mm. just drag your finger. And it, like hypnotizes her um but i remember my dad wanting to get me a phone when i was 12 and i was like no i'm i'm still too little like that means i'm a grown-up like i don't want one and i remember i fought it for like a year and i finally got one and it was great but i don't know i don't know how old i would want to give yeah. her a phone not not too young she doesn't really yeah. need it we we definitely cindy's 12 and we definitely utilize that the screen lock time on it. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. like two hours tops is what she can have her phone at. Then she has to request more time. Uh, I, I love it. Right. <laughs> but when COVID hit and they have to oh, be man. doing work from home, mm -hmm. I keep getting notifications that, Hey, she needs access to zoom yeah. she needs access to Google. She needs oh, access man. to the school website. I'm like, okay. I'll prove it all day. And then I come back and she's just watching like YouTube drama <laughs> videos. And I'm like, okay. Oh, but man. you know, when, when I was a, when I was a kid, I was watching YouTube, like skating videos, <laughs> fights and whatever was on YouTube mm -hmm. was so young, but she's, she watches a lot of like drawing, drawing videos and her drawing has improved from it. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we, Kind of take for granted, like people are saying, "Hey, too much technology is bad." Yeah. But on the other hand, if you compare her drawing side by side, it's like, "Whoo, these are pretty, good. pretty good." I can draw stock, uh, stick figures. That's about <laughs> as good as I can draw. <laughs> so when she started drawing, it's it's crazy, man. That's awesome, and it's like it, it's crazy because you never know what your kid is going to be like really good at. Yeah. Because it's like my wife can play like five instruments. And it's oh. like, yeah, and she was in band for like all of high school and like this, like all these awards and everything like that. And she was like, yeah, I really want to play for her. I want her to like know the instruments and learn music. And it's like on my end, it's like, I like to draw, I like to do art and like, you know, like act and stuff like that. So it's like, she has that side too. So it's like, she has this whole like range and we were joking. I'm like, what if she's just like really into sports and we can't like help her? <laughs> like, be like a NASCAR driver. Yeah, exactly. And we're like, I, uh, completely like out of my field. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, I think that's something like you're going to be interested in though, you know, cause you already oh, yeah. you know how you felt like when your dad was the way he was with you. Mm -hmm. And you know, no matter what, like, hey, I might not be doing this right, but I'm gonna give you my full attention. Exactly. I don't know if this is a score or a touchdown, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get through and we're gonna play this. Yeah, I'll game. cheer <laughs> cheer for you no matter what. Like that's my yeah. thing. Like whatever she's gonna be into, as long as it makes her happy and it's like good, you know, like yeah, I'll support it. For me, for me, I definitely 100% always got that from my mom. My mom was my biggest cheerleader. <laughs> she yeah. was my biggest supporter. And it's different, like, if you get it from a father figure or your dad. Yeah. Like, it just it, it hits differently. 
Cause like, that's, that's that male role figure in your, in your life. And mm-hmm. not, not in like a masculine way. <laughs> like that's, that's the guy who like, that's your guy. Like that's my dad right there. He's, he's mm-hmm. proud of me. Cause I did this no matter what it is. And for me, I didn't really get that. My dad, I, rem- I, one of the things I remember from my dad is, uh, Hey, you don't think, uh, you think if, since you're wearing all that makeup and stuff for this play, uh, if you try to like run for office one day, it will, it will come out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> run for office? Run for <laughs> office? What? <laughs> and, uh, like as straight face as I could be, I'm like, no, I'm, if that ever comes out that I wore face paint and makeup, I would just let them know what kind of play it was. Like, exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to prom like this. It's for a play. Like what's exactly. It's not like an yeah. everyday, like I'm going to get groceries. Like, yeah, but my dad was kind of the same, but like he had like very high and like outrageous expectations but like didn't really like force it but he would always be like yeah i mean when you become the first guy to mount on the moon and i was like well first off there's only like seven of us so yes i would be the only one and two i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> like i don't want to be an astronaut but he's like no you could be one of the first ones like you and i was like i it's fine like i don't need to be <laughs> I'm but playing you, checkers over here, Dad. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm trying. I'm watching uh, a marathon of Comedy Central presents, Dad. Like, yeah, yeah. I re- like, I remember to when I used to, I used to hang on out a lot with Corn Chip, and we talked about doing like comedy shows and stuff. I remember when we were up there, we did you did your uh, improv, me, Chris, oh yeah, Michael, Andrew. Yeah, improv one, and that was I remember that. That's just like fun, man. It is out there, it really you is. I think that's some of the the best stuff you can do, like with your time, mm-hmm. like giving back. I I talk a lot about like giving back to the community and mm-hmm. your environment around you, and the best way I think you can give back is however you feel that it's giving back, and if that, that's exactly. one way. Like I appreciate you making time to come on and just talking oh, about absolutely. your experiences. Yeah. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's tons of dads out there. I talked to my other buddy, I think it was Dustin. Like we don't, it's not really a thing for us to talk about like our experiences mm-hmm. like, as a dad or, Hey, this was difficult for me, you know, as a dad or as, as a male role figure in their lives. Cause there's nobody to talk to. We go, we go talk to our friends and they just start mm-hmm. laughing and making fun of us. That's just what we do. Like we just make fun of each other. Yeah. And we can't stop it. Chris, um, Chris just got a brand new truck. From yeah. Us. I saw that. Yeah. So I, um, I was one of the, I was one of the people that nominated him out of our work. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the, one of the criteria is it asks for a audio recording of why he should be nominated. So, you know, I said my piece, Hey, this is why I think Christian should be nominated. And I was in a, I was in a, I was in my closet because I was trying not to be too loud for my wife who was ready for bed. So I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I need to do this. I just saw this nomination right now. I need to nominate before somebody else nominates someone else and it's better. Mm-hmm. And so I'm in the closet and I'm like, I think, I think Christian <laughs> embodies our values as a, and i'm talking right and like i pour i pour my heart out and dude they make a video collage oh no getting getting his new car uh-huh <laughs> and it goes out to like seven thousand plus employees oh. and it's voiced over my whole nomination of them wow <laughs> and it's like it's like a tear trigger and and if if chris has time he can show it to you but oh, i'll have to, I'll have to mess I, it i'm about to go like outside and do some work and my team lead is like brian come here and i was like well i'm about to do something she's like stop what you're doing come here right now so i'm like all right what's going on she's like look this just went out to the whole company and i'm looking at it and then somebody i didn't catch it earlier because i said like hey you're very deserving of this when he got it yeah like our office and somebody at work was like, Hey, was that you on the voiceover? And I was like, <laughs> voiceover of what? And he's like that video that came out. 
and another buddy of mine at work is like, yeah, that was probably him. Brian talks a lot. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, I do talk <laughs> a lot. And she pulls me over and I'm looking at it and like, yeah, it's my like <laughs> probably 90, 95% of what I said. Wow. <laughs> I was talking about Christian. They just threw out to the whole company. It's only like company visible. So you should be able to see it if he's showing you. Oh man. But dude, I was like, oh, okay. And to go like circle back, Chris is like, Chris saw it later that night. And he's like, Hey man, I just want to say like, thank you for those kind words. And I was like, what words? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but like, that's, that's kind of how like we talk to each other for the most yeah. part. Unless there's like a fire pit going or somebody has a couple of drinks, then we like really get into it. I think, I think it really does help though. When we, we get out of our comfort zone. Yeah. We talk a little bit about our experience. My, my cousin that I just talked to you yesterday or the day before yesterday, mm-hmm. we, we talked about different experiences. And I'm like, you, you seemed kind of rigid when I was interviewing you, dude. And he's like, well, I didn't know what to say. And I want to, I want to kind of keep things tight. I'm like, yeah, man, but that's not genuine. I don't want to have you back on if you're not genuine, if you're just mm-hmm. like being like, what's the word? Like guarded. Yeah. Just, just let loose, like talk talk whatever you want to talk about just say whatever you want to say yeah because i guarantee you there's other dads out there that are going through the same thing or they have gone through it and -hmm. there's nobody to relate to there's nobody you can't go up to your friend be like hey christian man guess what happened my daughter yesterday she fell and i thought she hurt herself i ran over there like you can't talk to her. You got to be like the, you know, the dad, the the rock mm-hmm. in your family. Like, hey, no, like we're good. We'll take care of this. And I guarantee there's other dads out there. There's moms out there that feel that same way that, man, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if I'm a, I'm a really good parent or not. And the fact is you don't have to be like the perfect parent. You just got to be their parent. That's true. There really is no perfect parent, you know, like, if so there is, if there is, I want to talk to him. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know? and it, it's, but I really like what you're doing because it's kind of like creating this whole like support system. Definitely. For men. And like, you know, like you said, like you're not alone out there. There's other dads out there. Similar stories, different stories, but we all have the same goal, you know, taking care of our kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I really appreciate you, you know, like bringing me on. Yeah, man. I appreciate your time with me. I know. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Like I said, when you, one of the things that stuck out to me just in this conversation is like your time at the hospital with your wife, like you feel probably until you've talked to somebody about it, that you've just had to only bear stuff like that when like, yeah, you know, that's hard. Yeah. And it's, it's tough, man. There's times in in life too, where it's tough, but I think whether we think it or not, because I don't. I don't see myself as very masculine at all. Some people, <laughs> some people like say that. Cause like I have, I had like tools, like my hobbies or I go to the range. Like none of that necessarily means like masculine. Yeah. Cause to me, like masculine, like if you're able to, let's talk about whatever we want. That's masculine. <laughs> yep. It's I, I remember when I got out of the army, I ran a half mile or a half mile, a half marathon. And I ran it in an hour 48. So I was doing like an eight minute mile pace, but I ran it while I was listening to Katy Perry station on Amazon music. Nice. And I had it on speakerphone because I didn't bring my, my hair phone. Yeah. 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 So to me, like really masculinity and that stuff is just like, Hey, doing what's, what's right. Like in your, your eyes, like you're doing what's right Mm -hmm. and you're doing what you, what you want, you know? I want to listen to Katy Perry. Like, okay, that doesn't make me a man. Like, okay, fine. Yeah. Like, what I think doesn't make you a man is like not seeing your child or playing with them. Like, exactly. You know? Like, I, I, every like Pixar movie, like I cry. Like, yeah. I like, and it's like I. There's no shame in that. Like, I listen to Katy Perry too. Like, I'll do the dishes to like Whitney Houston. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, yeah, <laughs> music's music. Like, yeah, Dude, whatever. They- the movies I think that get me are like the father son. Oh like, man, dude! Every time, and and like I said, it probably goes back to like my father son connection. But I, when when I see those scenes, it doesn't go back to like me and my father. It it goes to like me and my kids. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't give them 
such a hard time or I don't misunderstand or just anything. Those scenes hit and it's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want to be this kind of bad, bad. Yeah. Guy. And it's, it's, it's funny. Cause it's like a, an aspect that I never really thought would get me is like music. Like uh, there's a song that I found not too, maybe like two weeks ago. It's called shine by uh, half past two. And it's about, uh, not so much like a dad, but like a parent mm-hmm. trying to raise their kid. And like the lyrics, like once I heard it, like it got to me and I was just bawling my eyes out. Yeah. And there's two versions. There's a pop punk version, which I like. And then there's like a mellow acoustic one. And that's the one that like. Half oh, past two, you said? Half past two. Look it up on YouTube. The, the music video will make you cry for the acoustic <laughs> one. But the, the punk one will make you want to get up and dance. Okay. And uh there's another song by egghead called my daughter uh i don't know if i can swear but the the full song is my daughter can f up your daughter (laughs) and it's just uh, this dad like this punk dad singing about how his like two-year-old can mess anybody up in the daycare and it's like it's it's a really cool and i love that song for the longest time i'm like when i have a daughter i can't wait to play this for her and like because it's like that's going to be our song and then like here i am so like when i'm yeah. driving her to daycare or from daycare i'll just blast it and i'm like <laughs> singing it to her and i'm like my daughter can f up your daughter and like <laughs> it's just like how that like because i've always had a strong connection to music so it's like yeah that strengthens it even more in a way that i didn't even realize i could yeah you know, connect to it i feel that man i tend to i tend to lean to like more popish music like Katy mm-hmm. Perry and stuff I think it's because I'm tone deaf and because just going to the range with the military and the helicopters and all that stuff messed up my ears like the the few months that I got out of the military we're all sitting there waiting to go on to the helicopter and then who was it the pilot or the I don't know the crew came out and they got so mm-hmm. upset at everybody and we're like what we're waiting for you guys and they're like everybody needs to have uh ear pro in so like the the little things that go in your ears mm-hmm. and i was like what do you mean we jump all the time without these and they're like no every oh, single cool. time you're around or on the airfield you need to have these on i'm like oh okay. Oh, wow so i have ringing in my ears so i tend to like higher pitch noises as you probably i don't know if you've heard the intro to the to the to the podcast i, I have yeah it, it's my wife and she's probably like that's probably why you like me because my voice is like really higher and that's something you can hear. <laughs> i was like no among other things <laughs> among other things <laughs> but uh i guess to to kind of close it out ram you got any like final thoughts you would want to say to like any other dads out there final thoughts that's a good question that's a good uh that's a good uh thought i, I don't know what i'm trying to say <laughs> Uh, I guess it's trust. You got to have trust. So it's like with me and my wife, like we trust each other. Like she knows way more than I do. So it's like, I trust her and she trusts me that like I'm learning it and I can get it. So it's like, there's, there's that trust. There's just, I, and also trust me, a kid, I would say, because it's like my, my daughter, she's so independent. And it's like, I try to like step forward and like, oh, wait, hold on. And my wife's like, no, wait, watch. And then she'll <laughs> figure it out. Or like, if she's trying to get a toy and she can't reach it and she'll start to like kind of fuss and get, get upset. And then I'm about to get up and my wife's like, nope, you got to trust her. And then out of nowhere, she gets it. She pulls out the toy, she claps, and then she like runs away with the toy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I just gotta, patient. I just gotta be patient and like, be ready, but also like, just let her, let her do her thing. Yeah, that's so true, man. That's yeah. So true. <laughs> well, all right, man. Well, we'll end up closing it out. Yeah. Uh, you think you have anybody in mind that would want to be on, or you I have a few mind people I in mind. Probably should talk to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some names. Do do a name drop right now. Just call uh, uh, Ben Ramirez, <laughs> uh, Ezekiel Cervantes. So if, if I can get these guys on the show, they're they're great dads. Yeah, they're really good dads. Um, That's what we're looking for. Even if there's yeah. bad dads out there, I, <laughs> I I really feel like we can learn stuff from them. And yeah, 
I, I want this to be a place to where you you might think you're the best dad. Like, hey, let's let's talk about it. Like, why you feel yep. that way? Because, like I said, if we we can learn from everybody, exactly. Whether, whether it's good, bad, wrong, or right. If you see somebody doing something right, you want to try to embody that. If you see somebody mm-hmm. doing something wrong, oh, you know it's wrong. Well, let's see if we can teach the right way rather than yeah. that lead you there. Like, Hey, you may be doing this wrong, but how'd you get there? Okay. Mm-hmm. So like we can reflect on that too, but no, I appreciate it, Ram. Absolutely. I'll go Anytime. ahead and close Have... it out. So yeah. Thanks for Absolutely. coming, man. Absolutely. If you ever need me back for an episode, I'm always here. Oh, definitely, man. Until next yeah. time. Until next time. You oh. take care. Oh, oh, Ram. Let me yeah. just get you to say, uh, okay, dad podcast. Okay. Dad podcast. Perfect. All right, brother. All right. You take care, man. All right. You have a good one. You too. All right. La, la, la. <laughs> Bad day.